Try Skillshare. Underrated animals. Today, instead of looking at Featuring a specific Visa. expansion or a set of variations within a class, we're going to do something a bit different and discuss builds that I think are underrated in the current meta. These tend to be builds that are often forgotten about in tier list discussions, because they either aren't part of a really popular class, or are part of a class that tends to be written off as weak. For example, let's look at the Snail build. Snails are pretty much universally regarded as low tier, having the lowest mobility stat in the game, and not much else to talk about. While they do have strong defense due to their shell, this pretty much only ever stops players that are in or below their weight class. It's pretty rare that it will successfully fend off an attack from anything larger. This is because a strong defense isn't worth much without at least some form of offense to counterattack with. If your opponent has no penalty for repeated attempts to attack, eventually they'll land a crit without ever needing to put themselves in danger. The best most snails can do in that regard is a pretty pathetic looking shell slap. But not all snails are so helpless. The cone snail runs a pretty standard snail build with one important addition the ability to fire venomous harpoons into their opponents. That's This one wild. ability elevates its power stat from one of the lowest in the game to one of the highest in the game, certainly one of the top tiers of the Coral Reef meta. Their harpoons can one-shot anything from fish to humans, and can even pierce mid-tier human aquatic equipment like wetsuits and gloves. Holy shit. So while snails as a whole are bottom tier, the cone snail definitely has earned a high tier spot. Next, let's talk flight. When it comes to agility in the air, the most important attributes are the ability to hover in midair and having full 360 degree motion. Most players probably think of either the hummingbird or the dragonfly when thinking about agility, and for good reason. Both of these builds can fly with greater precision than most of the builds in the same weight class. But most of these players are forgetting the insanely powerful and underrated build, the robber fly. Robber flies are a modification of the basic fly build, which most people consider a low tier throwaway class that's nothing more than a nuisance which yep. is stupid because flies have some of the most powerful abilities in the game. The first of which is their reaction time. Playing as a fly means you play the game in slow motion and can react to your opponent's options much easier. This ability alone boosts the fly's the defense stat from the, from the mediocre level of most insects to much higher. But in addition to this, flies also make a very special change to the normal insect build. Instead of having four wings, they only have two. Vsauce! I'm Jake, hey, why would two wings Vsauce. be better than four? Well, it's not so much that two wings are better, but rather what the two lost wings have been replaced with. Flies traded their back wings for highly unique structures called hull tiers, and hull tiers are essentially tiny gyroscopes, similar to what you'd find in a drone. And just like in a drone, these provide the fly with extremely detailed information about its position in space, allowing it to fly with unparalleled precision. So most flies use this to dodge attacks or land on hard to reach places. The robber fly says, forget that. I'm gonna use my superior aerial mobility and precision to literally catch bees, wasps, and hummingbirds in midair. Most aerial hunters have to catch prey in a lower weight class, but because of the robber fly's exceptionally long grab range, it can grab opponents while keeping them out of reach of a counterattack. That's sad. Then it can deliver its lethal armor piercing bite once it finds an opening or the opponent tires itself out. Robber flies are easily one of the best, if not the best, solo aerial arthropod build in the game, but they tend to be overshadowed by more charismatic builds despite being able to beat any of them one-on-one. -on -one. Next, let's talk about the African meta. So when people picture the top tiers of this server, most of the time they'll bring up the elephant, hippo, lion, Nile crocodile, and cobra. And that's all well and good, it's when you ask about who they see as low tier that things get strange. Most people will include the usual suspects, but for some reason also include the hyena. I think the reason why players rate hyenas so low is because they're always shown as getting griefed by lions. And it's true, lions do body hyenas in a 1v1 matchup. But okay, two things. One, lions are easily A tier if not higher in the African meta. So having a bad matchup versus the best carnivore player in the region isn't saying a lot. And two, hyenas have plenty of traits that make them more powerful than lions in specific circumstances. Hyenas have much higher endurance than lions they can run significantly longer distances because they put more points into the cardiovascular skill tree. Their hearts take up double the body weight percentage that the lions does. And so while lions can reach higher top speeds, they run out of stamina pretty quickly. Hyenas can sustain their top speed for miles, allowing them to chase down builds that would easily escape a lion. On top of this, the hyena's bite attack is one of the strongest in the asshole. entirety of the mammal guild. The hyena has a bite nuts. force of 1100 PSI, that's almost 
seven times more than the average human's bite. This is enough to crush bones, something that other predators in Africa lack. For example, big cats have to take down animals by suffocating them. Their bites don't actually do that much damage on their own, certainly not enough to break bone. But is a hyena's bite stronger than, say, a warlock punch from Ganondorf in Smash Bros? Well, over on Vsauce 3, I go through three Smash Bros characters that could kill you, with one of them being Ganondorf's surprisingly deadly punch. So check it out after you're done here. Thanks, Jake. So, like he was saying, the ability to crush bone with their bite grants them a huge advantage, allowing them to scavenge the skeletons of herbivores that were defeated by lions, after the lions have already gotten all they can out of it. Since they can't access the highly valuable marrow found dick. in bones, it's free game for scavenging hyenas. And all low tiers know that they need to respect hyenas just as much as lions. In fact, entire packs of cheetahs can be driven away from their loot by only a few hyenas, since they know that one bite from a hyena may mean they never run again. So, while they may not be a top threat in the African meta, they're by no means low tier. Probably either high B or low A tier. What sets these builds apart from others is their unique set of skills. You can set yourself apart in the nice. same way by 